Good afternoon. This screencast is an introduction to the notion of slope. And for my Algebra 1 classes, this will be a good way for you guys to prepare for your assignment on finding the slope between two points or finding the slope of a line when given the equation. First thing to consider when uh, discussing slope is what a visual representation of it is. I've got a picture here of an airplane having taken off from the runway and slope is a comparison or a ratio you might see it said uh, of the change in height compared to the change in length. Uh, another way of saying that is if you assign a letter like we've been doing with our Cartesian plane, if you think about the y direction as being the up and down direction and the x direction as being the left and right direction, then slope is simply a comparison of how much did the y value change compared to how much did the x value change. So we would say that slope equals delta y over delta x. The word delta is actually uh, referring to this little Greek letter that looks like a triangle right here, and that just means change. So how much did we have change in Y and how much did we have change in X? So for my little example here with the, uh, with the airplane, you can tell that it's got an altitude of 1,000 feet. Uh, so its change would be 1,000. And then the horizontal change would be 3,000. So that ratio of slope would simplify down to 1 to 3. So our slope for this little airplane example would be 1 third. It's a comparison of rise over run. You'll hear that phrase used a lot. You might have heard that already. Rise over run. And again, the idea is rising has to do with that vertical change. How much am I changing up and down? Whereas running left and right, that would be how much I'm changing uh, on the horizontal. So the comparison for slope is rise over run or delta y over delta x. Now I mentioned a moment ago we want to take that into the context of the Cartesian plane so let's let's graph out in the Cartesian plane uh, a couple of points and we'll practice finding the slope between those two points. So here are our x and y axes we're on our coordinate plane here uh, and let's look at the point at 2 1 Right there is 2 comma 1. Its x coordinate is 2. Its y coordinate is 1. That's the ordered pair. And then let's look at the point. Oh, we'll do 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, so let's see here. That's going to be a point of 6 comma 7. Okay, so 6 comma 7 if I've counted uh, correctly. And we want to know, well, hey, what's the slope between these two points? In other words, how much is there in the rise and how much is there in the run between these two points? Now, if we count, just physically count, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? That's a change of six. So our delta y or our rise would be six. And then from uh, two to six, that'd be a change of one, two, three, if I can count correctly, one, two, three, four, and uh, that would be our horizontal change. That would be our rise over our run. So we would say in this case, we'd say, okay, well, my slope, if I were to connect these two dots, let's try that again. If we were to connect these two dots, then we would say our slope equals six over four simplified down to 3 over 2, right? And you always want to practice simplifying your fractions. That's a good convention to work by in algebra. And so this slope, this comparison of rise over run being 3 over 2 means that I could have just gone up 3 to begin with. Check this out. I could have gone up 3, 1, 2, 3, and then over 2, 1, 2, to get to a point, and then up 3 more, 1, two, three, and over two more, one, two, uh, to get to that point that we were there at already. So again, rise over run is just a matter of measuring the change in y over the change in x. Now some of you guys that are pretty with it, you probably already realize eh, there's a formula hiding in the background here, and there most definitely is. You'll notice that that six is a number that we could have gotten from subtraction. Watch what we've got here. If we subtracted seven minus 1, right? 7 minus 1 would tell me how much my y value had changed. And you got it. 6 minus 2 
would tell me how much my x value has changed. So you can do a subtraction and you could get the same information without having to mess around with a graph. So supposing your teacher were to come to you and were to say, hey, I'd like for you to find the slope between the point six comma seven and the point two comma one, find the slope between these two points. It's very doable if you learn a formula. Here in green, I'll write up that formula for you and you can practice using it on this example. Slope, we've talked about as rise over run, change in y or delta y over change in x or delta x. We could say y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is a fabulous formula to have memorized because what it's doing is it's referring to uh, those subscripts refer to the coordinates of a particular point. If you wanted to call this your first point and this your second point, so x2 comma y2 over here uh, or x1 comma y1 over here, really it's just a matter of plugging in all four of those parameters into the equation. It doesn't matter which point you start with. It doesn't matter if I call this point x2, y2 or uh, this point x1, y1. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent and you stay with that uh, throughout the entire calculation. You'll get the same answer. Uh, watch what I mean by that. Okay, So when we run these numbers, when we say, okay, 1, that's in this case y2, minus 7, that's y2 minus y1, and then you come back over here and you say 2 minus 6, you get the same value. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. 2 minus 6 is negative 4. A negative over negative is positive. 6 over 4 is 3 halves, and we get that same slope value that we had earlier. So it really matters not which way you call it if you uh, called this point y1, uh, or excuse me, x1, y1. Uh, or if you called this point x1, y1. It does not matter. I would strongly encourage you, however, to memorize your slope formula. That's how you find the slope between two points when graphed out uh, on a Cartesian plane or when given the coordinates. Let's try one more example. Uh, this time we can calculate the slope between, let's say, 1, 1, and uh, negative 5, comma, four, all right? And if you're watching at home, you wanna practice, why don't you pause the video before we work this out, see if you can use your slope formula to find the slope between these two points. All right, if you paused the video, hopefully you've got your work shown. Uh, we can, again, subtract four minus one, that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so negative five minus one, 4 minus 1 is 3, negative 5 minus 1 is negative 6, so we have a slope of negative 1 half. That would be our slope. And again, your teacher will discuss with you a lot of the uh, corollaries that, that come along with slope. For instance, the slope being negative right here means that my line is sloping downward and to the right. So like when I graph a, a line that has a negative slope, that means it's going down and to the right. Uh, if I have a slope that's positive, as we did in the earlier example, it's going up and to the right. So a positive slope, you can kind of think about that in terms of uh, going up, that's a positively connotated direction. Here, this one's sloping downwards and to the right. So that's all I've got for you in this screencast. We've discussed slope. Again, I, I would uh, strongly recommend that you memorize your slope formula, rise over run, uh, and hopefully you guys will do well with this in your lessons.